In this video, we're going to look at how to build a test in Blackboard using Blackboard's test creation tools. Rather than simply build a test, we're going to show you how you can use question pools and random blocks of questions to make it more difficult for students to cheat through collaboration and answer sharing. To get started creating a test using question pools, open the Course Tools header, then choose Test Surveys and Pools. If you plan to create, say, a 45 question test using only 45 questions, you could go straight to Tests uh, and then click Build Test and start adding questions. But we want to create a uh, 45 question test that pulls questions randomly from a pool of 75 questions. This will result in each student getting essentially a different test, different questions in a different order. So instead, on the test surveys and pools page, we'll start out by clicking pools. Creating tests this way often, often raises concerns about the validity and fairness of the test. If questions are being pulled from a pool, how can we be sure each student is being tested on all the objectives? Uh, particularly when a pool is large relative to the number of questions. Well, the best way to do this is to create multiple question pools. For this example, we're creating a test for Module 1. Module 1 has three objectives, so we want two question pools for each objective. One consisting of questions that test for basic understanding, which I've labeled competent, and one that tests for deeper understanding, which I've labeled proficient. Depending on the particulars of your test, you may want to break your questions up into fewer or more pools, but hopefully this example gives you an idea of how you can use multiple pools to improve validity while using randomization. So let's look at how to create a pool. First we click Build Pool. And then we enter a name for our pool, and if we'd like a description. Then we click Submit. Before we start adding questions, uh, let's look at the question settings. Here we can set a number of defaults for what appears on the question page. For example, if we want to include feedback for each individual answer option, uh, we can check this box here. Or if not, we can leave this unchecked. Uh, the same goes for images, files, and web links. If we want to add an image, a file, or a web link to each individual answer option, uh, we can do that here. Um, or uh, if we want to include that for feedback, we can add that here. Uh, similarly, if we want to include or not include metadata, we can have this box checked. If we want to set a default uh, point value for uh, questions, we can enter that here and check this box. It was two. Um, and then we can uh, change some uh, display options here. So we'll leave this at sort of the default settings. And now let's look at creating a question. Just point to Create Question, and you see there's a number of question types available. We're not going to go into every single type that's uh, on this list. Instead, let's focus on the multiple choice question type, which is one of the most commonly used, just to look at some of the things that are uh, most common about how uh, the question setup works. Uh, you'll notice there's a space for question title. Uh, this is sort of a, a short reference point for the qu each question you can have a title it's not required um, you notice on the pool page once we set things up the full question doesn't appear by default so if you put in a good question title you can identify what the question is without having to see the full question text then next is the space for the question text where you put in the the, the prompt uh, and then under options, the options are going to vary depending on the type of question you're doing. Uh, for multiple choice, I have the option to change the answer numbering style if I want no numbering style, which is the default, or numbers, Roman numerals, uppercase or lowercase letters. Uh, do I want the answers to appear vertically or horizontally? Do I want to allow partial credit? And if I do allow partial credit, I can also say negative scores for incorrect answers. Uh, and then the last option, do I want to randomize the answer options? The next space is for the answers. You notice that the default number of answers is four, but I can add more answer options up to 100 just by changing the number here. If I want to have less than four answer options, I just scroll over to the side on one of the answer options and click Remove, and that will delete it from the list. Uh, next, there's a column for the correct answer. Uh, I just select the radio button for the answer that is uh, correct, um, and then enter your answer uh, option 
text in the answer space. And then if I've selected to uh, allow for partial credit, I can enter a partial credit value uh, where appropriate in the partial credit percentage space. If I put a negative value there, then that would um, make a negative score for that incorrect answer. At the bottom here, we have a space for uh, correct response feedback or incorrect response feedback and incorrect response feedback. Uh, both are optional. Um, and then at the bottom, uh, the, the metadata for the question, do I want to add category, topic, level of difficulty, keywords? I can just click add and type in a term and that will apply the keyword to this question. Um, that can be useful for pulling in questions from a pool of a questions of a particular type into a test or another pool. I can search by keyword, level of difficulty, topic, or category. The last space is for instructor notes. That can be helpful if you are sharing your test with other folks and you want to provide some background information on the question. When you're done, you can either click Submit and create another to create another question of this type, or just click Submit and uh, add this question and then perhaps add a question of another type. So here, through the magic of editing, we have all of our questions added. A few things about this pool canvas page. Uh, if I click the Options button next to the pool, can uh, the pool name, I can edit the name of the pool uh, or the description of the pool. Uh, and also, as I had mentioned, you by default only see uh, a brief preview of the the question text. If you want to see the full question text, just uh, point to question display and choose full text. If you want to see the question and um, the answer options, click the little pop-out window button and that'll show you the full question details. Um, a last option here that's kind of neat is if you want to delete individual, you can check the boxes and hit delete. If you want to uh, set a point value, a default point value for questions, check the boxes uh, and then put in a point value here and hit update. And that'll apply that point value to all the questions. It's not important to have a point value on questions in a pool when we're going to be pulling those questions in at random though. You'll see that when we create the test that works a little differently. So now I've got a pool all set up. We will go back out to the pools page. Just one item here. If you want to edit any of these pools, just click the options button next to the pool and choose edit and that'll get you back to the pool canvas page. Now let's create the test. Back at the test series and pools page, we'll click test and then build test. Enter a name for your test in the namespace and then there's a space for description. The description is text that appears before uh, the student clicks on the link to launch the text to the test so they can see it before they get started and then the instruction space appears after the test has been opened so it'll be only visible once they're in the process of taking the test. Click Submit and now you see uh, this page looks a lot like the pool canvas page. I could add individual questions to the test which is helpful for if you have a test where you're pulling in questions randomly but you want to make sure every student gets these five questions you can use create a question here and add those five questions individually either before you add in your pools or as you're adding in your pools. Um, you also have a question setting space which is the same settings as we saw in our pool. Now to add a random block of questions what we want to do is point to reuse question and then you see we have three options here. We can create a set of questions which would be a fixed number of questions from a pool that would go onto uh, this test or an individual question with find questions um, but we're going to do random block. So here we select which pool we want to pull from and then which type of question we want to pull. Um, our pools just have multiple choice questions. We'll say all pool questions here because that's handy, but it is possible to say have a pool that has multiple choice questions and then true false questions and then reach into this pool and pull 
five of the multiple choice questions and then reach into this pool again later and pull five of the true false questions. Again, for this, we're just going to do all pool questions and then click submit. You see this adds a random block of questions to our test page. And now I want to change the number of questions. I want 10 questions from this pool, so I'll just change questions to display in the block to 10. Click Submit. And now the default point value here is 10, and I don't want 10. I want one point per question for this pool, so I'll say Update Points 1. And now you see the total points here is 10, and the total uh, questions is 10. And I can just, to create another uh, block, I just click Create Random Block. And here I'll pull from uh, my next block. And then, how many questions do I want? In this case, I want five. And now, because we are, um, we've split up the competent questions and the proficient questions, I can actually make the proficient questions worth more points. Say two points per uh, question for these and one point for the, uh, the, the competent questions. Um, you can also add a question block by, when you mouse over, you notice this add question button pops up. I can click here and then choose create random block and then delve into uh, the the third pool here and again we'll do 10 and one and so on so now again through the magic of editing I've got all of my pools added you see I've got a total 45 questions 60 points for this test um, one of the things to note about this question setup as it stands right now is that the questions are going to be clumped together on the test all of the uh, module one objective one competent questions are going to be clustered together all ten of those and then there's going to be uh, a cluster of five more difficult objective one questions and then a cluster of objective two competent questions and so on that's something that we'll actually be able to shuffle up when we post the test and we'll look at how to do that in uh, the next video on publishing your tests I hope you found this video informative if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact the instructional design studio